many of you are uh, quite familiar with some of the antipsychotic medications they are available in your phcs like haloperidol risperidon few phcs uh, even uh, tiapin olanzapine are also available it is important to know some theoretical aspects of these drugs that it helps us in practical management i will be talking about this general principles of prescription of antipsychotics and which antipsychotic to choose in which kind of patients and then what precautions needs to be taken while prescribing antipsychotics and some special co populations so coming to how do this antipsychotic act if we look at what happens in the brain in a per- who is patient who having psychosis or schizophrenia what usually occurs there is a this dopamine pathways so dopamine is the major neurotransmitter that is the culprit in schizophrenia so wh- what happens there are dopamine circuits in the brain so there are about uh, five dopamine circuits in the brain of which one is uh, meso limbic pathway so it from a midbrain to limbic system it gets connected so what happens in schizophrenia is over activity of this pathway so this when it's over activated there is more of dopamine activity in this pathway that gives rise to positive symptoms of schizophrenia so positive symptoms you are aware that it is delusions hallucinations aggressive behavior these are positive symptoms formal thought disorders so it manifests in this way and also there is one more dopamine pathway from this ventral tegmentary area to the cortex it is called mesocortical pathway there is decreased dopamine activity in this pathway so this gives gives rise to other symptoms of schizophrenia like negative symptoms of schizophrenia or cognitive symptoms of schizophrenia so that's why you see uh, patients having a lot of negative symptoms because there is less dopamine activity in this area if we look at the pharmacological management what an ideal drug should be an ideal drug an ideal antipsychotic to decrease the dopamine activity in the meso limbic pathway should increase the dopamine activity in the mesocortical pathway so that should be so here dopamine activity needs to be suppressed i need to increase the dopamine activity so i need to readjust these circuits in the brain so that the person will have improvement in the positive symptoms and the person will have improvement in the negative symptoms that is what i need to do right what drugs uh, we have for this these drugs basically act on these two pathways that i told basically antipsychotics are classified into typical antipsychotics which are called first generation antipsychotics they came first into existence and then we came up with typical antipsychotics a typical antipsychotics example are risperidone olanzapine quetiapine and some newer antipsychotics like aripiprazole amisulfide clozapine which is especially used in the treatment resistant cases typical antipsychotics includes chlorpromazine flupenthixol haloperidol flufenazine whenever we are prescribing antipsychotics we need to follow some general rules uh the choice of antipsychotics like the choice of antidepressants is based on is the patient's preference considering the side effect profile and considering the availability accessibility and the cost so all these factors needs to be taken into account whenever you are prescribing an antipsychotic it's usually started in a low dose and it's gradually increased and always this is important recommend using single antipsychotics at a time because when you combine antipsychotics usually uh, you are increasing the side effects preferably in only in treatment resistant cases then there is a combination of antipsychotics this is that is done but usually it's recommended to prescribe single antipsychotics and especially when you are prescribing atypical antipsychotics so we need to monitor because they have got lot of metabolic side effects they affect your insulin pathways they cause they increase your lipid levels in the blood uh, so they cause hypercholesterolemia so it is important to monitor body mass index during each follow up monitor blood pressure monitor glucose monitor lipid levels at least once in 3 months keep on repeating these investigations and give sufficient time for the antipsychotic to respond so it's usually some responses are noticeable in the first 2 to 3 weeks but it takes about 6 to 8 weeks for the complete response to occur this rule is applicable for any uh, drug used in psychiatry that is optimum dose for optimum duration before you change to next drug and use long acting preparations especially for those who have poor oral drug compliance so many people have these questions as to how long we need to how long we need to prescribe these antipsychotics usually the first episode usually it is prescribed for 1 to 2 years or 2 to 3 years in fact and uh, but if there are recurrent episodes the guidelines mention that you need to you, the the antipsychotics maybe you can be prescribed indefinite so there is no clear cut period as to uh, for which the duration for which this antipsychotic needs to be preferred but usually for one episode you consider about 2 years and then for subsequent episode it can become indefinite whenever whenever you are withdrawing any antipsychotics 
So gradually taper it and stop because rebound psychosis is common. The rebound symptoms uh, are very distressing for the patient. So even if the patient has plans to stop, then it is his right that he has to gradually taper the drug and then stop. Chronic patients may de- uh, may require indefinite treatment, and for some reasons, some antipsychotics are more effective for some patients. But even though the underlying mechanism of action, what we tell it acts on the same circuits, person for some people may respond only to olanzapine. Some people may respond only to haloperidol. So. But for some unknown reasons, some antipsychotics are more effective for some patients. Choice of antipsychotics. So, preferably in current generation, usually the atypical drugs are preferred. Typical antipsychotics are generally not prescribed unless they are not available uh, in your setting. Then you can go with typical antipsychotics. Each uh, has got their own advantages and disadvantages. But there are more chances of discontinuation of drugs, especially when you are uh, prescribing typical antipsychotics because they have more chance to produce these extra pyramidal side effects which are very distressing for the patient due to which they frequently drop out of the treatment so antipsychotics uh, atypicals are preferably considered safe in that but they have got metabolic side effects that's the uh, that can be a uh, very problematic in some patients but they need to be monitored for these side effects now coming to some of the common drugs that are used in uh, used in your setting or in our setting uh, in nimans we use a lot of uh, risperidone uh, commonly available, free of cost for BPL patients. So that's why we prefer prescribing uh, Respiridon to most of our patients as the first line of drug. But there is no clear-cut guidelines as to this has to be the first line of drug. Only the clozapine is not preferred the first line of drug. Rest of any antipsychotic can be given as a first line of drug. But in Nimans, we usually begin with Respiridon because it is freely available in our setting. So when you are prescribing Respiridon, it is usually started in the doses of 2 mg in the night. And we can go up to 4 to 8 mg. So that is where generally we keep it at 4 to 6 mgs uh, for adequate symptom stabilization. Only if they are not responding, we'll go up to 8 mg. And then if the person is still not responding, we'll trap it and stop and try to stop one more drug. Some side effects are common for all atypical antipsychotics. I'll be mentioning only about the specific side effects for that particular drug. This respiridon has more propensity to cause this uh, prolactin. Sedation, weight gain, EPS can occur. Even with atypicals, it is likely to occur, but less chances compared to typicals. This hyperprolactinemia can be a significant problem in some patients. In males, it uh, decreases the sexual desire and it can cause, uh, and in females, uh, um, amenorrhea, uh, irregular cycles. Gynecomastia can occur in males. So because of this increased uh, prolactin levels. So this is one typical side effect of this respiridon. So what you do? If you are coming across this side effect, so send for serum prolactin levels. If it's high and there is a temporal correlation between giving respiridone, so then you need to shift to one more drug because these side effects can be problematic in some patients. Not It does not occur in all the patients. Then olanzapine. You know that olanzapine is usually started in the doses of 5 to 10 milligrams. You can usually prescribe up to 10, 15 to 20, but maximum dose is 30. Weight gain is a very significant problem with uh, olanzapine. You can see the difference in the uh, weight gain even after one month, one and a half months after prescribing the the patient appears bloated. That's the significant amount of uh, metabolic side effects this drug has, but very very effective uh, compared to even compared to respiridon. It's very effective. The effects are very fast. There are noticeable changes in the positive symptoms, but at the cost of some uh, physical side effects, a lot of metabolic side effects are very common. So that's one disadvantage of it. Quick response comes with olanzapine and quetiapine. So quetiapine is usually uh, prescribed in preferred in elderly. So usually started in the dose of 25 milligrams and in, can be given up to 800 milligrams. They say, but usually we keep it around 200 to 400. That's the dose we try. The side effect profile is sedation, weight gain. That is same. Sometimes you come across patients like after starting olanzapine or respiridone, they develop diabetes or some metabolic side effects. They are putting on a lot of weight. Uh, they, they have developed hypertriglyceridemia. So that is bothering more than the psychosis now. So then we need to shift over. So the next drug which we would like to consider shift over is aripiprazole. Because this drug is relatively uh, free of these metabolic side effects. The patient experiences usually some restlessness during the initial period, akathisia like symptoms during the initial period of starting res- aripiprazole. But otherwise, if the patient gets adjusted to this drug, then it has got a safer metabolic profile. We, we prefer shifting over to this. The amisulfurate, it's a bit costly drug, not available free. But usually, uh, 
prescribing the persons who are having uh, predominantly negative symptoms is usually started in the doses of 100 mg can be given up to 400 mg and like resveratrol prolactin increase in prolactin is a unknown significant side effect of this amisulfide so the manifestations will be same like in male there will be decreased sexual desire gynecomastia and in females there will be irregular cycles or amenorrhea are very common and then this last drug prosopin so you should be very careful when prescribing these medications it is used for patients who are not responding to any other antipsychotics or the patient has failed to respond to at least two of the antipsychotics in the past uh, but symptoms are not coming down so then we prefer using this drug clozapine it's usually started in the doses of 25 mg and it slowly increased uh, and can be given up to 200 to 400 mg depending on the how how much patient is able to tolerate the side effects of this drugs so but preferably this drug when uh, uh, it's prescribed by a specialist because and also and also in a setting where frequent blood monitoring is possible because now this drug can cause agranulocytosis which can be life threatening or sometimes rarely clozapine induced myocarditis can occur so which can have a life threatening side effects probably not prescribed not advisable to prescribe in a primary healthcare setting because this drug requires intense monitoring and if given above the uh 600 mg it can cause even cause seizures those are the few uh, atypical antipsychotics that we described now coming to the typical ones commonly used ones are this chlorpromazine and haloperidol chlorpromazine uh, it is usually uh, given in the doses of uh, 50 mg and uh, started with the doses of 50 mg and usually kept in the doses of 100 to 200 though the maximum dose recommended is about 600 100 to 200 is the Uh, usually prescribed dose uh, so some side effects are very common uh, to this uh, typical antipsychotics which i will be covering in the subsequent uh, slides and uh, haloperidol it is available in injectable form it is available even in tablet form uh, it usually started with the doses of uh, not 0.5 it's 5 mg and then we can increase up to 10 to 20 mg per day and uh, this uh, acting preparations like uh, injection flufenazine injection flupenthixol haloperidol they are roughly given Uh, haloperidol is at least uh, given once in 4 weeks and uh, flufenazine and uh, flupenthixol are given every 2 weeks so, so these these are cheaper uh, acting like cheaply available uh, long acting preparations uh, like other long acting preparations of uh, resveratrol and olanzapine are also available but they are very costly at uh, about 4500 per uh, per injection it is so, but uh, haloperidol injection is available at around 150 rupees for that injection so in patients who are not compliant so once in 15 days these drugs can be given coming to the side effects of this typical antipsychotics especially the common extra pyramidal side effects that are encountered are dystonia cathesia and pseudo parkinsonism so this dystonia is there will be painful spasms of the muscles especially the anti gravity muscles like extensor group of muscles uh They, they involve almost whole of the body but usually predominant in the cervical region usually pre- predominant in the upper limbs and lower limbs so side effects usually starts immediately after sur- supposing you come across a patient in your uh, primary health care setting the patient is very violent you prescribe haloperidol 20 mg or 10 mg injectable form you give the patient was sleeping next day morning the patient wakes up uh, he is bending his neck and his uh, tongue is is coming out and is having rigidity in his arms is the diagnosis of dystonia so that means that patient has developed this uh, especially more common in uh, uh, adolescent group younger age group of uh, people are more prone to develop this dystonic reaction then it is usually uh, it is treated with this injection finergan this is promethazine you can give 25 mg uh, or 50 mg or deep im then you can continue to give the trixiphenidine which is the anticholinergic drug more uh, extra pyramidal side effects of this uh, typical antipsychotic is akathisia so akathisia here the patient will be extremely restless the patient will be of this restless uh, that, that i am not able to sit in one place there is constant pacing around taking the legs inability to rest it is the typical feature of this akathisia it usually occurs uh, for, for uh, usually occurs uh, after 2 to 3 days or 1 to 2 weeks after starting this uh, antipsychotics uh, more common with typical antipsychotics and even we can occur with aripiprazole if it's a significant problem then we need to change the antipsychotics because not everybody develops this akathisia also tablet propranolol uh, can be prescribed in the doses of 40 mg per day or even benzodiazepines can be prescribed but 
patients usually respond to propranolol and then you can continue to give the original drug one more side effect is the pseudo parkinsonism like parkinsonism like patient will develop typical features of parkinsonism like tremor rigidity and bradykinesia so that this side effect usually occurs from 1 to 2 weeks after starting this antipsychotics is characterized by this tremors rigidity blank facial expression drooling of saliva so in these patients it is preferable to start with the trixepinidine or if you are suspecting this side effects then whenever you are starting the antipsychotic only this thp can be started along with the antipsychotics to prevent development of these kind of cps side effects so some precautions clozapine keep it reserved for patients who are not responding to at least two antipsychotics so don't prescribe it unnecessarily and uh, always be careful uh, whenever patient is on close so you need not prescribe some you have come across a patient who is on close up pen for follow up also you need to be very careful because you need to constantly monitor the side effects of this close up pen uh, even depot preparations no uh, whenever you are prescribing the patient can develop side effects after four days like severe dystonic reaction can occur with uh, so unless there is a setting who can manage wherein the patient can be brought in emergency setting and manage because sometimes uh, life threatening side effects can occur because the patient can have respiratory muscle spasms uh, in so there that requires a setting to manage precaution should be taken not to combine or uh, recommended uh, or using the antipsychotics then the higher recommended doses so for aggressive patients you can use comfortably injection haloperidol 5 to 10 mg but preferably give phenergan also along with it so that you can uh, you can prevent the development of severe dystonic reactions and some rare side effects uh, uh, like uh, some patients after starting this antipsychotics you have given haloperidol for a violent aggressive patients but next day he develops intense fever he has rigidity all over his body and he is having altered sensorium so then this rare side effect is common it is called neuroleptic malignant syndrome so this can be life threatening this needs to be managed in a icu like setting so if if you come across uh, such patients who are developed these kind of uh, symptoms after starting any usually common with typical antipsychotics so then it needs to be referred to the higher center for management uh, precautions should be taken in elderly preferably referred to as a uh, specialist for management if you come across any elderly patient on any antipsychotics make sure that you take a proper documentation of the effects and side effects also quetiapine is preferably advised in elderly population in pregnant women decision needs to be taken whether antipsychotic is really required in pregnant women or not because there is no contraindication not to prescribe uh, antipsychotics because olanzapine quetiapine haloperidol the typical antipsychotics are considered safer during even during pregnancy and the risk of not prescribing this antipsychotics so it, it can affect the mother self care and she, she uh, and the impact impulse act of self harm can occur so there are risk of not prescribing the antipsychotics so uh, pregnancy is not a contraindication but preferably the choice of the drugs and uh, in this special kind of population so preferably it is referred to a, a specialist for management these are my references uh, mautsley prescribing guidelines and uh, stahl's uh, essential psychopharmacology that finishes my didactic presentation